He already dark. Praise just walking around talking like he's got all night, you know. But uh, I got a question for you tonight. Anybody in this house love Jesus? Amen. It's a fact. He loves you and me. And we are going to sing a good old song. What a day that will be. I can sing better standing up so everybody stand. I think you don't need a handbook on that. We'll, uh, Brother Jason, help us keep on key. And don't, if we miss the words, just act like we got it, okay? <laughs> Amen. Amen. But uh, what a day that will be. Been a busy uh, weekend. Had a dear preacher friend of mine. Uh, had, uh, went to his service last night, my little aunt. We had our service Friday. Been a pretty busy weekend. But I tell you, we're going to see him again. Amen. And we look forward to when that, when that day comes. And yes, that day's coming. Amen. When we're going to go be with the Lord. Let's sing this good old song together. have a prior request just feel free to, to share it let's remember brother uh, Wes's sister Mary uh, will be having uh, surgery tomorrow so please remember her and also uh, brother Wes sister Robin's little grandson Cooper that brother Jason was anointed with oil for uh, is he is he go tomorrow to what's what's he having done tomorrow 
Where's Robin? What neurology? And then, I, then, then he goes for an MRI. Is that Friday? So please, let's remember a little Cooper. Lift him up uh, to the Lord. Uh, do we have any other prayer requests? All right, let's remember Austin in her prayers. Lift him up to the Lord. All right, the Bass family, let's remember them. Kathy? Yes, remember little Colton Pierce's Jimmy's, Jimmy's uh, little boy. He has surgery, did you say, Wednesday or Thursday? Wednesday. So be remembering little Colton in your prayers. All right, any others? Amen. Any others? Amen. Yes, yes. Any others before we pray?
Isn't that wonderful to know? So uh, we just we just keep looking to the Lord. That that He He's brought us through so much, and He's He's going to take us all the way safely home to be to be with Himself. Uh, the Lamplight Theater. I'm going to briefly go over announcements. Uh, Lamplight Theater, more than just a man. If you're interested in going on Friday, March 26, I guess that'll be a week from this coming Friday. Uh, we need you to have the money in by, by when, Kathy? By next Sunday, if you can. Some of you have already, uh, already paid, so we thank you for that. We get 10 and it'll be $10. So surely we can get 10 uh, from, from the church. So uh, do remember that. And uh, our own Todd and Lacey Price, they're, they're in the presentation. And so... Uh, Let's go and support them and back them up. I know that'll make them feel good. And then March the 20th is Family Fun Night. And that begins at 5. We'll be having hot dogs. That sounds good. And we ask each family to bring one of the following. Chips, drinks, or dessert. And there's a food sign-up sheet in the front foyer. And we want you to come and join us for a, a night of great fun and fellowship. We had a wonderful time uh, last month. So I hope that you'll come and be with us. Then on the 28th. We're doing something a little different. Uh, on Palm Sunday at 6 p.m., we'll be observing our Lord's Supper. We'll have already the pre-filled cups. It's going to be a little different than what we're used to. You know, we're used to having the, uh, the, uh, the little cups and, and also the, the bread prepared for us, but uh, it's all in one, and it's very sanitary, and it's been a while since we had communion, and you know, the, we're, the Lord told us to do it, didn't he? And so we're, we're going to do it, amen and observe uh, the, the Lord's uh, Supper. So I hope you'll plan on coming and being uh, here <clears throat> for that. Now let me back up. I missed this, but not purposely. Brother Norbert is going to be having a presentation next Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. So I hope, I hope you won't miss that service. Uh, he's going to be uh, <clears throat> going over his trip back home and all, all that he did there and showing us some footage there and so uh, you don't want to miss that next uh, Sunday night okay that'll be at 6 p.m. then April 3rd Children's Church will be having Easter egg hunting Debbie you're already getting 
Set a bunch in, that's good. And that'll be here to church from 2 to, from 2, from 12 to 2, weather permitting. You'd think a man could read, could read wouldn't you? <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, that'll be from 12 to 2 p.m. There'll be food, fun, and lots of eggs to hunt. We're asking each family to bring a dozen plastic eggs. And now listen to this, filled with wrap candy. Don't wrap it yourself. Make sure it's already wrapped, okay? <laughs> you say, what if I make it? Well, wear gloves if you make it, I guess. <laughs> Just wrap it up. But, but, but anyway, I'll go on. Uh, so I hope you can provide each family a, a, a bring a dozen eggs filled with wrap candy by Wednesday, March the 31st. Then, of course, April the 4th is Easter Sunday. We always enjoy uh, Easter, so we're excited about that. Then April the 10th, uh, the Men's Prayer Fellowship at 9.30 uh, in the Fellowship Hall. So plan to attend that. Then Women's Fellowship, 6 p.m., uh, April the 12th and then April 24th a celebration of life service to honor brother Lawrence Boom this will be held at 6 p.m. here at the church and that is on a Saturday so plan on uh, coming to that and being here uh, as we celebrate brother Lawrence Boom's life all right okay well sister Brenda I started to say street you were a street weren't you sister Brenda street Deloach is going to be coming and singing. You pray for Sister Brenda as she comes to sing. Bless her, Lord. I want to 
to hear her sing. Well, there'll be a lot of friends awaiting when I walk through those gates, because I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. Yes, I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. There's a star in the darkest night Just to give us a little light It will guide us through the night When hope seems gone Soon the darkness fades away And there breaks a golden day My, how those songs bless me. Amen. My goodness. 
Thank you so much. So uplifting. Amen. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Lifting up the Lord. And when we lift Him up, He lifts us up. Open your Bibles with me to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Uh, the Lord's really just been moving on my heart. We preached about the cross last Sunday night, and we're going, to go, we're going back to the cross again tonight. Amen. Uh, I can never hear too much of the cross. Here's what the Lord's had on my heart to preach to you this evening. The purpose of the cross. And yes, there's purpose. Uh, of the cross and you know the purpose of the cross was to produce God's grace I don't know if you ever stopped to think of it like this but without the cross and Christ dying on that cross there'd be no grace the greatest display yes of God's love was at Calvary's cross but also grace was displayed on Golgotha's hill when the Son of God hung between heaven and earth and he died for us we'd be helpless we'd be hopeless we'd be on our way to hell if it wasn't for Christ going to that cross and I'm so glad he did how about you and let's stand to our feet I'm going to read the first five verses Verse 1 to verse 5 of Galatians chapter 1. Paul, I like how he says this too, an apostle not of men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Paul said, I'm not in this because I woke up one day and I was craving chicken didn't want to go to work. <laughs> he said, I didn't put myself in this position. He said, the Lord did. Amen? He said, God did it. All right. And all the brethren which are with me under the churches of Galatia, grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself. Think on that. I'm glad we're known as the volunteer state because... There was no greater volunteer than Jesus Christ. I studied in this, and the Lord just spoke that to my heart, and I thought, yeah, I know crimson, crimson tide red. They've got the blood red. Jesus shed his blood for us on, on Calvary, but us volunteers have a little bit to claim here because the ultimate volunteer was Jesus Christ. He gave his life. It wasn't taken from him. He volunteered himself. Father, I'll go. Amen? All right, but let's, let's go on. Who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us, thank you, Lord, from, everybody say from, from. this e present, present evil world according to the will of God and our Father to whom be glory forever and ever amen Paul never got over the cross and we should never get over the cross let us pray father in Jesus name we thank you and praise you for your blessed word that we've just read now I ask Lord that you will anoint my lips of clay with the Holy Spirit help me Lord to remember that that I've studied and and Lord may may we just glorify you tonight and Lord, may your word go forth in power and purity and clarity. And Lord, may we have a deeper appreciation of, of your cross. And Lord, of the grace that was displayed there. And the grace, Lord, that is displayed even now and will be throughout eternity. We love you. We praise you. Get glory from this message and bless your people. Convict those that might be lost. Let's uh, listen to this message and save their souls in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. On the great day of atonement, the high priest slew the sacrifice and sprinkled with blood everything in the tabernacle. 
the blood on the seat meant atonement for sin and mercy and grace for the worshiper. The blood over the broken law was being satisfied and that God and sinner had been reconciled. And the sinner could now come into the presence of God in peace. So it is in the cross of Jesus Christ. When he died on the cross, he opened up a new and a living way unto himself. The writer of the Hebrews says it like this in chapter 10, verses 19 and 20. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, he is flesh. What we see in verses 3 through 5 is a declaration of the gospel. And as we look at the purpose of the cross, it's all about grace. The first thing I want you to notice with me is simple grace. Notice that, simple grace. This is just not a greeting that uh, Paul used as a formality in a letter. He really meant it when it came from uh, his pen and came from his heart that came from the Holy Spirit. When he said, look back at verse 3, Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Simple grace. That's the essence of the New Testament gospel. Simple grace. Two of the most precious words related to the gospel of Christ is grace and peace. The first is the source of salvation and the second is the result. Grace is positional, peace is practical and together they flow from God our Father through His Son and our Savior the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace. That is God's holy, unconditional goodwill toward us. It's the basis upon which He saves us. Grace is God's unmerited favor that reaches out to us in all of our sin and need and gives us what we do not deserve. His unconditional, unearned salvation. I like what someone said about grace. Grace is God's love in action. Grace planned our salvation from before the foundation of the world. It was grace that the Judaizers were mercilessly attacking in Paul's Galatian churches. And peace, thank God. You know what peace means? Peace means that the war is over. Thank God. Grace means that we are reconciled with God. Peace means that all is well with our soul. This grace and peace comes from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Thus God the Father and God the Son are seen working together to make our salvation sure. I, you and I, we're very familiar with this. But what a precious statement. In verse 3, after he said, Grace be to you and peace, he says next these beautiful, lovely, powerful words, from, from whom? From God the Father. What a wonderful name for God. Judaizers knew him as Jehovah, the God of the covenant, as Elohim, the God of creation, and as Adonai, the sovereign Lord, the God of command. They knew him as the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But the Galatians had been taught a higher truth than that. He was God the Father. Amen? God the Father. And then co-eternal and co-equal with God the Father is our Lord Jesus Christ. He joins with the Father in bestowing the twin blessings of grace and peace upon His own. Yes, my friends, something was significant too about the words, look at the next words, where it says, and from who? From our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, you know the Celts have a Christ, but He's not our Lord Jesus Christ. 
the Jehovah Witnesses have a Christ, but He's not God the Son, nor did He rise, their Christ rise from the dead, because according to them, His body was dissolved into gas in the tomb. Their Christ came back in 1914. He's not our Lord Jesus Christ. The Mormons have a Christ, but their Christ is not our Lord Jesus Christ. He was a polygamist, secretly married to Martha and Mary at the wedding of Cain of Galilee. He's not our Lord Jesus Christ. The Seventh-day Adventists have a Christ, but He did not bear our sins in His own body on the tree. According to them, Satan was the scapegoat, and our sins were put on Him. But their Christ is not our Lord Jesus Christ. The Catholics have a Christ. The priest makes him by pronouncing five Latin words over a wafer of bread in the Mass. That's not our Lord Jesus Christ. The liberals have a Christ, but he was not virgin born. His miracles were slates of hand. His life was only a good example. His death was an unfortunate martyrdom, and his resurrection was only a myth. Their Christ is not our Lord Jesus Christ. The Judaizers who invaded the churches of Galatia had a Christ too. But he was a Christ who was unable to save to the uttermost. All of those who come unto God through him, his grace and power was not sufficient for that. He required that addition to his own work, the law of Moses, be hung like a dead weight around the necks of all of those who would aspire to any hope of heaven. I'm glad I know who the real Jesus Christ is. He's the darling, spotless Son of the living God. He is the Lamb of God he, that taketh away uh, the sin of the world. He never sinned. He's holy. He's righteous. He's sitting at the Father's right hand right now praying for you and me. Thank God He's living in our hearts. That's my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And does not the Bible tell us that in the last days there will be false Christ that will rise up? Even Jesus said before He returned that there would be people claiming that they were Him. And He said, don't believe them. I'm glad I know who the real Jesus Christ is this evening and I want to ask you a question do you know who the real Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is I remember a show I think they brought a modern version of it back we only got one channel growing up in the mountains up there in Simley Creek and Oak Hill. Sometimes we'd get, uh, we'd get WCYB, sometimes we could get WJHL. Uh, but I, I remember this, uh, this uh, show as a boy. It always intrigued me. And the title of the, of the show was To Tell the Truth. And they would have three different ca characters or four, and they would each try to convince the panel that they were this certain person. My friend, Jesus don't have to convince himself to you and me anymore. He's already proven who he was by how he came and what he did. And thank God we know the apostles and the Christians were witness to that. And you and I were to tell the truth about Jesus Christ. I'm glad I know the truth. How do you know the truth, uh, Brother Mark? I know Jesus Christ. He is the truth. Did he not say, I am the way and I am the truth? Amen. I am the way and the truth and the life. And no man cometh to the Father but by me. Thank God for his simple grace. But praise God, it don't stop there. Secondly, remember we're looking at the purpose of the cross. Secondly, we see saving grace. Amen. Everybody say saving grace. I'm thankful for saving grace. Because if grace can't save, it's not grace. Thank God. Think about that for a little while. Saving grace. Look at the first part of verse uh, number 4 of Galatians chapter 1. Oh, how powerful it is. Speaking of Jesus Christ, He said, Who gave Himself for our sins, that He might deliver us from this present evil world. The most important question that any sinner can ever ask is this. What am I to do about my sins? You see, the Judaizers' ideas were, if we were to ask them, what are we to do about our sins? They would say, keep the law of Moses. They said, be circumcised, sanctify the Sabbath. 
and observe the traditions of the elders and the rabbis. Jesus said in Mark chapter 10 verse number 45, For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give His life a ransom for many. Boy, I'm glad that He gave it. You remember when He was before Pilate? Pilate said, You hear your accusers? He said, I have power to crucify you or I have power to release you. And Jesus looked at him and said, You wouldn't have any power if my Father in heaven hadn't given you this power. He said, You don't have power to take away my my life you don't have power to give me life he said I have power my father's given me the power to give my life hallelujah and to take it back again my friend I'm glad that my Lord and your Lord and Savior holds the power of life within his power and within his hands thank God and whatever comes against you has got to first pass by him and if he allows something to come against us praise his holy name he'll be right there with us to help us face it it, to help us overcome it amen and ultimately we're much more than conquerors through him that loved us anybody glad you came to church tonight oh praise God anybody thankful for God's saving grace boy I am we see behind this language stands the image of the suffering servant in Isaiah 53 who bore our iniquities and carried our sorrows through being smitten and crushed by God's righteous judgment. Paul here emphasized the voluntary character of Jesus' self-offering. Yes, he gave himself for our sins. He didn't send an angel to do it. He, he didn't send a cherub to do it. He didn't send another man to do it. You see, they were not worthy. Jesus, to be our substitute, he had to become a human being. He had to be without spot and blemish. He was without sin. He that knew no sin, the Bible says, was made sin that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. My friend, you couldn't save yourself. I couldn't save myself. But thank God Jesus has saved me. Hopefully Jesus has saved you. It's all by His grace. And God's people said... Speaking of Jesus, notice what Paul says in Philippians chapter 2, verses 7 to 8. He said of Christ, but made himself of no reputation. Have you ever stopped to think what that means? Made himself of no reputation. It literally means he made himself nothing. Wow. He made himself nothing. And took upon him the form of a servant. Think about it. The one that made everything you and I look at. Hey, the one that commanded angels, the one that calmed the troubled seas, the one that would rebuke the wind and it would be silent, the one that walked on the Galilean sea, the one that made man and breathed the breath of life into man, became a man, thank God, and he entered into a sinful world. I'm glad Jesus came down, aren't you? I'm glad. My friend, I don't have no new gospel for you. I've got the same gospel, hey man, that Peter preached and Paul preached and John preached and I'm telling you we don't need another gospel because we have the true gospel hallelujah some people try to paint it up some people try to lessen it some people try to put their humanness in it they try to add to it or take away from it no friend just enjoy it thank God for the gospel amen. of Jesus Christ amen alright but he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man see as God he could never die he had to become human he had to become a man alright and being found in fashion as a man what did he do? he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross yes Jesus' death was not a fortuitous accident. He willingly submitted himself to the divine purpose of his heavenly Father, saying, Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first 
that he may establish the second by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Hebrews chapter 7 verses 9 through 10. Now I want to share these powerful words with you. You might want to jot this down. How this blessed my soul. It's so true. Here we go. The only avenue to a right relationship with God is the path that leads to Calvary. I'll repeat that. Thank you, Lord. The only avenue to a right relationship with God is the path that leads to Calvary. What are we to do about our sins? Nothing. All of the doing was done at Calvary. God's grace is the answer to men and women's guilt. Jesus gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from. Everybody say from. From. from thank God. From this present evil world. The word for deliver here, it means to rescue from danger. The word for evil uh, is, is poneros, which carries the idea of labor and pain, sorrow, malignant evil. The word that is used for world here, it literally means age. Our Lord Jesus Christ gave himself for us to rescue us from this present age of malignant evil. An age that's controlled by its God who is the devil. The God of this world who hath blinded the minds and hearts of those that would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, he blinds people's eyes, but thank God Jesus opens people's eyes. The devil's a thief. The Lord comes to give life. The devil's a liar. Jesus tells the truth. He's the truth teller. He's the truth liver. And thank God, I'm glad I have his truth tonight. You and I have the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the notion of two ages juxtaposes a present age of sin and decay. That's where we're at now. And a future age. <laughs> of blessing and peace. Anybody getting weary down here? Anybody getting tired of this old world? Anybody longing to receive that glorified body? Anybody missing your loved ones that death has stripped from you and that's in heaven? Beloved, just keep up the good fight of faith. Just keep looking unto the Master because some golden daybreak, He's coming again, hallelujah, and He's taking us out of this old world. Glory. I preached this morning and I tell you, I, 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 was, I was really tired. I got me a little nap so I'm feeling much better. But oh, someday I won't have to preach the gospel anymore because we'll be with Jesus. Amen. Well, glory. I, I have a longing to go. Be all right with me. If he came tonight, praise his name. All right. Now, here's the thing. Uh, we know for Paul, however, the death and resurrection of Jesus has radically punctuated this traditional timeline. Remember, we're looking at the, at the two ages. We're in the present age of sin and decay. But thank God, we have God's grace to make it through it. But then there's coming a blessed age of blessing and peace. And Paul, we know he taught that we as Christians, we now live in a profound tension between the no longer and the not yet. The coming of Christ has drastically relativized, though not completely obliterated, former distinctions of race, class, and gender. It is also placed in a totally new perspective. Such uh, formal requirements as circumcision, food laws, and feast days. Yes, my friend, to put it simply, Christ has rescued us from this present evil age. How did he do it, preacher? He did it through justifying us by faith when we put our trust in Him and pouring out His Spirit in our lives. I'm glad this is an accomplished fact and we must not be drawn back into a yoke of slavery. But while Christ has rescued us from this evil age, He's not taken us out of it. Thus our liberty must not degenerate into license nor the gift of the Spirit be abused by selfish, carnal behavior. I'm thankful for saving grace. Then that brings us to the third point I want to share with you. Not only do we have simple grace, 
and saving grace. But I'm thankful for sovereign grace. Amen. Sovereign grace. Look back at verse number 4. It says, Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world. We've seen simple grace and saving grace. But now, thank God, I'm glad we see sovereign grace. He's, that he might deliver us from this present world. What's the rest of that say? According to what? According to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Praise God. Amen. Paul continues, simple grace, saving grace, and now sovereign grace. Paul's Galatian friends should realize that wrapped up in the counsels of God's grace, is God's government. The grace that reaches out to deliver us is according to the will. Say it with me, everybody. According to the will of God and our Father. All of the initiative is with God the Father. John chapter 1, verses 11 through 13. Speaking of our Lord, Brother John said, He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. But as many as received Him, to them gave He power Amen. To become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. Thank God. Which were born, listen, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Because God has a father heart, He reaches out to lost sinners of Adam's ruined race. That truth will be an everlasting wonder. But when we arrive on heaven's shore and we know even as we are known, our wonder and our awe will be complete. We shall express it in songs of loudest praise. The action of the Son was the very proof of the Father's love. In other words, God loves us not because Jesus died for us. Rather, Jesus died for us because of the Father's eternal unconquerable love for us. John 3 16. It says it. For God. Hey, it starts with God or we wouldn't have it. Amen. For God. Some people want to take a little bit of credit for it. Or they want to give somebody else a little bit of honor for it. No, my friend. It's the Lord that does it. Amen. It's not the preacher. It's not the singer. It's not the evangelist. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to receive Him. He's the one that does the saving. And God's people said, yes. Where do we see this sovereign grace displayed? Two great examples I'd like to share with you. We see it displayed in Ruth, the Moabitess woman. What an example. We see it when, we find, when she found herself at the feet of Boaz. She was overwhelmed by the loving kindness an unmerited favor of that great prince of the house of Judah. She exclaimed these words in Ruth chapter 2. These are beautiful words, precious words. Ruth chapter 2 and verse number 10. She said to Boaz, Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? We know Ruth is in the lineage of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You say, what's, what's so valuable and significant about that preacher? She was a Gentile. Thank God she was brought in. And thank God I'm glad we've been grafted in to the olive tree. We're a wild olive branch, but thank God we've been grafted into the olive tree. Well, glory. Did you hear that, Satan? You can't do a thing about it. We are joined to the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I'm the vine and you're the branches. And he said, without me, you can do nothing. We bear fruit. We get our power. We get our strength. We get our uh, ability from the Lord. Amen. Amen. From the Lord. Where else do we see this sovereign grace on display? Well, we see it with Mephibosheth. He dwelt afar off in, in a place called Lodabar. It's known as a place of no pasture, a barren, inhospitable, dead, dry land. He was lame 
on both of his feet. He was the victim of a fall. He had no standing before God or man. He had been born into the family of Saul, David's most bitter foe. And he feared David for his very life. But what did David do? David said, and he's a type of Jesus here. David said these words. Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? Then sovereignly and in grace surpassed only by the grace of God, David sent his messengers to find poor Mephibosheth. Poor lost Mephibosheth. Oh, they came and they sovereignly and in grace, they came and they found him. It was all David's idea. It was David's love that flowed out to Mephibosheth. David took the initiative. David's messengers who found Mephibosheth and confronted him with the royal command of the king. Come, come, come just as you are. Aren't you glad? Thank God that you heard God's summons from heaven. That the Lord said, come, come as you are. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. Dear Lamb of God, I come, I come. I'm a worthless, filthy, no good for nothing sinner. But Jesus, you came and died for my sins and took my place on an old rugged cross. Jesus, would you save an old sinner like me? Jesus, would you wash me in your precious blood? Hallelujah. And come into my heart. And save my soul. Hallelujah. Does that excite you? It ought to. Oh, we see. What, what did Mephibosheth do? Well, all he could do was respond. That was his part. All that he could do and all that the king expected him to do. He did it. He came to the king. You see, friend, if you die lost without Jesus Christ... It won't be anybody's fault but your own. The call has been summoned to you. The master has spoken to you time and time again. And you turn him away. Please don't turn him away. One time too many. Come while he's yet day. Call upon him while there's yet mercy. While there's yet grace. That's being offered to you. Thank God. I'm glad one Sunday morning as a little seven year old boy. The Holy Ghost arrested me. And convicted me. And let me know I was a sinner. And I needed a savior. And praise God when I went to the altar. That didn't save me. But when I called on the savior. And I said Jesus wash me. White as snow. Jesus coming to my heart. Jesus forgive me of my sin. Jesus saved my soul thank God he did and I've never been the same hallelujah aren't you thankful for Jesus alright let me go on so we see when he got to King David he said these words what is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am then he learned how far grace would go. What happened to Mephibosheth? He was adopted into the royal family. <laughs> All of his lost estates were restored to him. He was given a place at the king's table as one of the king's sons. Hallelujah. No wonder in later years, looking back on it all, Mephibosheth could say to David, My Lord, the king is an angel of God. What sovereign grace did for Mephibosheth, it has done for you and me. It's according to the will of God and our Father. One writer put it this way, speaking of our Lord, He saw me ruined by the fall, yet loved me notwithstanding all. He saved me from my lost estate. His loving kindness, oh, how great. Paul, moreover, wanted his Galatian friends to know that wrapped up in God's sovereign grace is God's glory. Amen. And then he laid this 
out and wrote these words. After that, he was exulting and rejoicing in the grace of God and the sovereign grace of God, the saving grace of God, the simple grace of God. He said these words, To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. My, my, my. What's that say? Everything that God does ministers to His glory. God's grace is one of the factors in that vast equation of His glory. In creation, God displays His wisdom and power. In redemption, He he displays His love and grace. And my friend, the more we learn of God's grace, the more we glorify God. In the last book of the Bible, the apocalypse, the book of Revelation, the angelic hosts worship God with wonder and awe. And they exclaim these words, Thou art worthy, for Thou hast created all things. That's as high as their worship can rise. They proclaim the Lord as the God of creation and they raise their anthems uh, to His wisdom and power. But then thank God somebody else is introduced. Woo! His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is introduced and the whole song is lifted an octave higher. Thank God the blood-washed saints exclaim, Thou art worthy for Thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God. Well, glory by thy blood. The worship soars far above that of the angelic host and far above the thrones and dominions in the heavenly hierarchy. The ransomed children of Adam's ruined race proclaim him, that is Christ, as the Lamb of Calvary. They raise their anthems to his love and grace. The angelic host sing the song of creation. God's blood-washed throng sings the song of redemption. You see, the angels can't sing that song. Only the saints of God. Only those who've been washed in that blood and redeemed by Christ's blood can sing the song of the redeemed. No wonder the scripture says that angels desire to look into this. Thank God for His grace. Anywhere you find God's grace, you're going to find God's glory. Because glory comes with God's grace. Anywhere you find man wanting to get honor, you're, not, you're going to find pride. You're not going to find grace. You're not going to find glory. But my friend, it's all about glorifying the Lamb of God. It's all about exalting Jesus. It's all about shouting from the housetops, shouting in the wildernesses throughout the valleys. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for the grace of God. That's what the cross was all about. If it had never happened, we sure wouldn't experience grace as we know it. Saving grace. Thank God. Sovereign grace. Yes, God's grace ministers eternally to God's glory. The redeemed, that's you and me, will be exhibited to the angelic host eternally as trophies of God's Grace, we ourselves will be the awesome proof of all of the orders and ranks of creation of the immeasurable vastness of God's grace. Thank God. When we make it to heaven, we won't be patting one another on the back and say, boy, you made it. You pulled yourself up by your bootstraps and you endured it. No, my friend. I know Jesus said, blessed are they that endure to the end. The same shall be saved. I know that the scripture tells us that we're to fight a good fight. We're to keep the faith. But my friend, we couldn't do any of that without the amazing grace of Almighty God. And when we walk on those streets of gold, when we approach the Lamb of God, we won't be congratulating ourselves for all that we've done. We will be saying glory and praise and honor and dominion hallelujah and worship be to the Lamb of God thank God for He's worthy it's because of Him that we have God's grace it's because of God the Father's will that you and I could respond 
when the Holy Spirit convicted us and showed us we were a sinner and we needed to be saved. My friend, it's all about Jesus Christ. The gospel is. Not Jesus plus something else. Not Jesus minus something else. It's absolutely Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And what he did for us on the cross. Anybody in this place grateful for the cross? Amen. Grateful for the King of glory that went there to die in our place. Can we stand to our feet? Brother Jason, you come to the piano, whatever the Lord's put upon your heart to play. If you want to use this altar, friend, this altar is open for whatever need that you may have. Oh my, but I tell you what I think would be a great investment of our time. If we just paused, if we just took a few minutes and thank God for the cross. Thank God that he looked down through eternity past and he saw a no good for nothing sinner like you and me. And that he ordained his son. He sent him to an old rugged cross knowing how he'd be treated. Knowing he'd have to turn his own back on his own darling lovely son. But thank you Father for being willing. Thank you Jesus for being willing. Thank you Holy Holy Ghost for being willing. Lord, we want to praise you and we want to exalt you. We want to lift you up. Lord, we want to thank you for dying on the cross. This great plan. Help us, Lord, never to take away from it. Help us, Lord, never to add to it. Because we know, God, if we add to it or we take away from it, it won't be your grace. Lord, we just want to take time right now to thank you. And to praise you for your grace. Oh, just let him know, brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's worship him right now. In this sacred moment. Oh my. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you. We praise you. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. No wonder. Brother Paul said later. In the letter to the Galatian Christians, he said these words, But God forbid that I should glory, saving Jesus Christ and Him crucified. He said, I'm crucified to the world, and the world's crucified unto me. He said, I'm going to boast in the cross. I'm going to tell people how to be saved. I'm going to glory in the grace of God. I'm going to tell whoever, whenever I can, that Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Oh, it's by grace, through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. It's the gift of God. Are you thankful for the gift of God? Do your heart good just to step out from that pew where you are and just come down here and if you're able to bow on your knee, bow on your knee before the Lord and thank Him for dying on the cross Thank Him for being raised again for your justification. Thank Him for interceding for you. Oh, let's just take time, church. It'd do our hearts good just to take a fresh trip, just to go back and to realize or try to imagine the great price that it cost our Lord and our Savior and to give Him glory and to give Him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you'd like to come and join us, come on right now. Come on and let's thank Him. Let's praise Him for the cross. Yes, dear Lord, we come and we bow before You to thank You, Jesus. Church, 
I'm not where I ought to be with the Lord. Would you pray for me? I need to rededicate my life to Jesus. Would there be anybody like that? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Pray for me. Anybody at all? Anybody at all? Anybody at all? You know, I would be amiss tonight if I didn't ask this question. Do you know without a shadow of a doubt that if you were to die right now, you'd go to be with Jesus in heaven? You can know that. If you don't know that, would you raise your hand and say, Boy, preacher, I, I struggle with that. I, I would like to know that I'm saved, that I'm ready to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody like that tonight, would you just raise your hand and say, pray for me. Anybody at all? Anybody at all? Are you here tonight and you're just struggling in your Christian life? You know you're saved. You know you've got an inheritance awaiting you in heaven. But boy, it's just been tough lately. And you need prayer. You want us to pray for you. You want your brothers and sisters of Christ to pray for you. Whatever it may be, don't matter. Would you raise your hand and say, pray for me, preacher. God knows I have a special need. Will you and God's people pray for me? Anybody at all? Anybody at all? God bless you. Somebody else. Anybody at all? Anybody else? Lord Jesus, thank you for coming and settling down among us. Thank you, Lord, for the cross on which you died. Thank you, Lord, that you were buried and you arose from the dead. Lord, a, a precious soul raised their hand said, Lord, that they need your help. They need your strength. And God, I'm asking you right now to pour a special blessing upon them in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, until you come or until you take us to heaven through death to always hold out the blood-stained banner of the cross of Christ, to always boast in you, Lord, and you alone, to glorify your name, to tell others how they can be saved. We love you, Father. Lord, get glory out of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You want to sing a verse of that, Brother Jason? That's God's grace, isn't it? What, what page is that? Is it? 232. Since we've been preaching on God's grace, let's sing a verse or two of this. 232. Is that in the Rejoice hymnal? 232. I better get the book. 232. All right. Let me get there. All right. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mound I'll pour. There where the blood of the Lamb was spilled. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will part Get that last verse. Marvelous in fun and matchless grace freely bestowed on all who believe, all who are longing to see.
bless within. Aren't you thankful for that grace? Grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. And God's people said, are you thankful for His grace? Thank you, Lord. My goodness. Amen. We love you, Jesus. We honor you this evening. Lord, thank you for the cross. Thank you, Lord, for being with us and living in us. Thank you for all you do for us. Now, Lord, lead, guide, and direct us by your grace, by the sweet Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, to live obedient lives to you. To bring glory and honor and praise to you. Now dismiss us in your love and care. Bring us back the next appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You're at liberty to go. God bless you. Have a good night.